Welcome to AI for Good, the leading action-oriented global and inclusive United Nations platform on AI. Organized by ITU in partnership with 40 UN sister organizations and co-convened with Switzerland. The goal of AI for Good is to identify practical applications of AI to advance the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and scale those solutions for global impact. In today's session, we're counting on you to use the live video wall feature to ask questions and post comments to help create an engaging discussion. We encourage you to stay until the end as we will hold a 30 minute networking session in the neural network. Here you can meet, ask questions to our distinguished speakers, connect and chat with the AI for good community. It is now time to kick off the session and welcome our first speaker. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you so much, Anna. Uh, a very good day to everyone, and thank you so much for joining today's webinar. Welcome to the AI for Good Machine Learning 5G Challenge webinar uh, session. My name is Thomas Basco from the ITU, and I'd like to welcome you uh, to this webinar. The Machine Learning in 5G Challenge aims to create a community uh, to solve network-related problems using AI and machine learning. Today, we are excited to host another interesting webinar for the 2022 ITU AI Machine Learning 5G Challenge Problem Statement, uh, which is titled Machine Learning for Throughput Prediction in Mat API Wi-Fi Networks Using Coordinated Spatial Yields. As always, we are counting on you, the participants, to help create an engaging discussion. If you have a question, please type them in the video wall, and we will take them during the Q&A session right after the talk. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce today's uh, session speaker. Today's talk uh, webinar is going to be given by David Nunez Cadrado, who is working on his PhD at the University of Pampo Fabra in Spain. Uh, this PhD is focused on developing techniques for improving the performance wireless networks. His research interests are in the areas of Wi-Fi and IoT with emphasis on mat access point coordination techniques for next generation's WLANs. He is also currently involved in several international and national research projects uh, related to Wi-Fi and wireless sensor networks. Uh, today's talk, he will introduce the problem statement that proposes the use of machine learning to predict the throughput that a subset of uh, APs using CSR can achieve. The goal is to build an, uh, a machine learning model that is able to predict the achievable throughput given any random combination of access points that aim to transmit simultaneously and also use it to find the best groups of uh, access points in different network scenarios and topologies. Uh, of course, we also have some goodies at the end of the webinar. So please uh, stay by and don't go away so that you can see these goodies that we have for you. So at this point, I would like to welcome uh, David. Uh, good afternoon, David. Hi. Hi, Thomas. Uh, hello, everyone. Well, uh, first of all, uh, thanks for having me today. And thanks uh, to you all for, for attending uh, this presentation. Well, uh, let me share my, my screen. Okay, well, uh, everybody, uh, well, today uh, we are talking about uh, machine learning for throughput prediction in coordinated Wi Fi networks, as uh, Thomas uh, said before. And this is a kind of introduction to the two problem statements for the, this uh, ITU uh, AI challenge, okay? I'm David, and okay. Just to uh, recall the the last edition, 2021 edition, uh, well, was a challenge about the the well to explore the feasibility of applying machine learning in 
next generation wireless uh, local area networks, uh, specifically through the use of federating learning. And uh, well, from there, uh, there was also an associated paper at the end of the, the work and using the results of the, the, the challenge, okay? Basically, this, uh, this challenge, the last or the past challenge, was uh, focused on spatial reuse in the uh, 11 AX context. Okay, and this edition, uh, the edition of this year, pretends to extend the work of uh, the pre previous years about the spatial reuse. Okay. But now in the context of uh, coordinated Wi-Fi networks. That said, we will uh, discuss or briefly introduce just uh, uh, a, a little about the multi-IP coordination and all of these uh, technologies uh, of uh, uh, yeah, develop for the, the next uh, generation for wireless lines. Well, uh, multi-IP coordination is um, about, uh, well, it's, uh, includes some uh, schemes, basically uh, where access points cha change information to coordinate simultaneous transmissions, okay? It is a little different to the traditional Wi-Fi networks we we have seen uh, uh, today. Uh, today um, basically uh, consists of several schemes that has uh, have uh, been proposed so far. And one of the most uh, interesting uh, is uh, spatial reuse, where devices share the spatial resources, and uh, so they can. Uh, transmit uh, simultaneously, okay, using uh, the same frequency resources and also the uh, the same time slot. Okay, simultaneous transmission are succeeded only if IPs here with this schemes a scheme are uh, suitable to transmit at the same time. That is the if. Uh, the SINR or signal to interference post noise ratio at the receivers is uh, high enough. Okay. Uh, well, the higher the SINR at the receivers, uh, the higher the modulation and coding scheme and MCS used by the trans uh, transmitters and thus uh, the data rate. So the time spent to transmit uh, something is. Uh, lower than in other uh, cases. Basically, to, to sum up, uh, coordinated spatial reuse aims to find the best combinations that includes the AP-STA pairs, I mean uh, AP
Okay. Okay, sorry guys, I had a connection issue or something like this. Well, let's go. Well, uh, this is the the setup we use in the for the simulations. Well, here we have uh, an scenario with uh, nine. This meeting is being recorded. Is centered. Is centered in a sub area of ten by ten meters. Okay. Well, uh, the number of uh, stations associated to each AP is uh, randomly selected uh, per deployment. Uh, okay, the, the number of, of stations associated to each AP is randomly selected per deployment, uh, N. Uh, will be it will be a number between one and five. Basically, in this example, three stations has been selected for a given deployment, and all uh, all these stations uh, will be uniformly deployed at random in each sub area. Okay. Well, uh, we consider downlink traffic in saturation conditions, so traffic uh, transmitters. Uh, will be the access point and receivers will be the stations. And uh, we consider the path of model for uh, 11AX, okay? Well, that said, uh, we, we have some inputs. In, in this case, the, the third one is uh, intended to uh, store the values of uh, received sin signal uh, extraction indicator or RSSI, which uh, basically is the the power received by uh, stations when all of these uh, APs transmit. Okay, say a table or a matrix uh, like this, and uh, for instance, the value RSSI to one equal a uh, minus 70 dBm means that a uh, station two, in this case, uh, this, uh, this is this value, uh, receive minus uh, seven, uh, 70 dBm of power when AP1 transmits, okay? This is a, a, the matrix of uh, to store the uh, RSSI values, okay? Well, the other uh, input is uh, the scheduled, the scheduled uh, APSTA pairs. For every transmission, we will have a set of or a subset of APs, but also uh, we'll have uh, the, the stations that uh, these APs uh, will transmit to. So this contains the list. Uh, this list for a, a APSTA pair for a given TXOP. And uh, these APs will be selected to transmit simultaneously, as uh, I said before, using the coordinated sp uh, spatial views scheme. Okay. The maximum number of uh, APs transmitting simultaneously is uh, constrained to four. So uh, from a, a given set of nine APs, we will uh, only transmit using up to or at most four APs, okay? A random number between one and four APs. And this is an example that we will see in, in detail uh, uh, after this slide. And this uh, contains, for instance, uh, this example uh, means that AP1, in this case, AP2 and AP9 transmit to STA3, STA4, and STA25 respectively. Because uh, here in the first, I mean, the columns are uh, referred to the number of each AP. In uh, the first column is uh, for AP1, AP2, in the second column. And in the in the nine, column number nine, it's uh, for AP nine. So 
the number a specific value uh, means the station that uh, this uh, AP will transmit to. Okay. And now, well, uh, the model uh, could be well a, a neural network with these uh, uh, inputs at the RSSI and also the APSTA pairs. And well, the this neural neural networks will uh, tune the the throughput value uh, well based on the the data set of the data set of course that uh, we will provide uh, uh, to the participants and uh, using that uh, participants uh, have to be able to train this network to uh, estimate uh, the throughput. Well, now uh, I I'm gonna I'm going to comment on the data set. Uh, well, we simulated different deployments, uh, specifically uh, 10,000 different deployments. Uh, and in each of them, the number of stations as well as their positions are randomly generated, as I commented uh, before. The number of stations uh, is uh, between one and five, and the position, for instance, is the number of station is uh, three means that three stations uh, are associated to each AP and they are randomly placed uh, in each sub area. For every deployment, 10 uh, hundred different TX apps are simulated in, in each of them. Uh, the pairs, the AP and STA pairs are uh, randomly generated. Okay. Well, this is an example of the data set. Uh, each deployment is stored in a, in a TXT file. And this is uh, an example of the deployment number A. This is a, a label, which uh, represents the deployment A uh, on the top of this uh, file. And then uh, appears the, the RSSI matrix uh, appears, okay? The RSSI matrix uh, contains these values of uh, as I as we we have seen before. Each row in this uh, matrix contains the RSSI values seen from the perspective of uh, uh, each station. Okay. For instance, this value in blue uh, belongs to the uh, you know row two and column three, which means uh, RSSI two, three from the matrix we, we have seen before, equal to, in this case, minus uh, 75 uh, dot 94 dBm, means that the station two, in this case, receive uh, this value of uh, power when AP3 transmits, okay? And then, well, uh, just uh, after the the uh, RSSI matrix, uh, it's the the TX ops. Each uh, each row represents some simultaneous transmission at a at a given TX op. The first nine columns of each row show the APSTA pairs selected for this uh, specific transmission opportunity. And the remaining nine exhibit uh, the throughput achieved by these devices. For instance, uh, this is the TX up number six from, uh, this is the one, two, three, and this is the six. And then it uh, has these, uh, these values the third the the third three zero values means that the ap1 known of uh, ap1 ap2 and ap3 uh, transmitted in this tx hub but ap4 in this case uh, transmitted to a station four because in the uh, in this uh, column appears a number four which means that uh, station four was selected to 
to transmit or in this case uh, as part of this TXOP. And then after that, after the nine uh, first values, appears the throughput associated to this uh, this TXOP. Basically, from here uh, uh, starts the these values. The, the first three or uh, four are zero because uh, no devices transmit transmitted and 70A is the throughput associated to this transmission and a 100A is the throughput associated to this transmission. Okay. Well, in some cases, uh, due to the, the low values of, uh, well, when the, the signal, uh, the CINR value falls under a certain threshold, in this case around 5.7 dBs, the throughput is set to zero because the receiver is um, unable to decode properly the the frame, the received frame. So we consider uh, that the, this frame will be discarded. So in some cases, even when uh, several values, for instance, uh, four here and eight here appear, uh, probably in in other uh, in other uh, deployment you will see uh, some uh, zero values uh, here okay uh, if the signr value uh, doesn't uh, mean or doesn't uh, meet this condition of uh, uh, to be uh, above this value and okay, here, uh, well, we plan to to present uh, the the problem statement. Basically, we divided the this challenge into problem statement, and the first one is intended to build a machine learning model able to uh, predict the throughput that a subset of access points transmitting at the same time can achieve using a coordinated spatial reuse scheme that we commented on on that. Using a set of files for training, uh, participants will be able to train a, a model that estimates the throughput for a given set of uh, scenarios only with uh, the information about the RSSI matrix and the subset of uh, APS, uh, APSTAs uh, pairs selected to transmit and receive at every TXO. Well, next steps uh, will provide you, of course, the, the data set for training that includes the throughput values uh, for every TXO. And, uh, well, uh, participants uh, need to train this model and propose, of course, the model and train that. Um, the solution will be evaluated in the test data set without, of course, the throughput values. This is the first uh, approach, okay? Only for throughput prediction, given the the, the RSSI matrix and the uh, TXOP uh, with the information only about the uh, AP and STAs uh, pairs selected for every TXOP. And, well, the okay the next one is the the second uh, problem statement is about the multi ap group creation and this is just to uh, to apply uh, the the model that probably you have to build for the the first statement and uh, here the solution, uh, well, able to, to build a solution, able to build groups of compatible APs that include a, a, a particular AP. Okay, the objective here is to find the best subset of APs that include the, the target AP, okay? And the best subset of APs, the one that maximizes the aggregate throughput, okay? the sum of the, basically the sum of the throughput for all APs. Uh, this can be, uh, as I said, uh, using the throughput prediction model from the previous point or 
exploring a different path. This is a, a use case to apply this model. And here we will give uh, the, the participants only one AP per transmission instead of uh, given uh, the set or the subset of transmitting uh, and receiving devices. We will, uh, we will give them only one AP and uh, the associated, of course, uh, station for this TXOP. And participants will have to estimate the combination around this AP that achieves the best aggregate throughput. Uh, and then the number of APs is constrained to at most four. Okay. Uh, well, to sum up, this is a uh, well. You, you will have to uh, to find the best combination that includes the the specific APs. For uh, for a given uh, deployment, and this uh, combination will include the at most or the APs uh, at most four APs. Of course, that include the uh, the APs uh, the referenced uh, APs. Okay. Um, that's all from my side. And so, if you have uh, any questions. Uh, thank you so much, uh, David, for introducing these uh, problem statements. Now we are going to go into the Q&A. So I'd like to welcome my colleague Vishnu for some discussion and some Q&A. So uh, Vishnu, good afternoon or good evening to you. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. And uh, thank you, David. Uh, and uh, thank you for your group. The in uh, UPF, uh, this is a long collaboration with UPF. Thank you very much. I see Boris is here. Thank you for coming as well. Uh, the max limit of four. Uh, why why do you have a max limit of four uh, APs? Could you please explain? Ah, okay. uh, Dave, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, well. Uh, this is a, a number, this is a, a parameter, okay? Uh, we selected four because uh, through experiments, we found that uh, in, in most cases, uh, only uh, the best uh, suitable uh, number is three or uh, at most four APs, okay? Through simulation because uh, you know, as the number of APs or simultaneous APs uh, grows, the interference caused by them over uh, the receivers is uh, is high. So it's probably more difficult to find uh, a proper uh, set subset of uh, APs that include more than four. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, so that 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 assumes that assumes uh, a geographical location or area where you would have or uh, adjacency where you where these access points are located. Looks like I think so. In, in these four access points are in one cluster together is that the assumption yeah 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 of course it, it depends on the the position but but no specifically because ap's are are always centered in each sub area okay they they are fixed uh, but the position of the station change uh, from one scenario to another so uh, varying the position of stations even when the the APs are are kept are kept uh, fixed, the the you know the selection of uh, or the, the performance of the systems uh, could vary depending on the uh, the specific uh, position of uh, each station. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, 
let's let's look at the evaluation um so for 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 these problem statements would you have uh, would you have a validation and testing data set uh, later uh would you or or you would have a split of this uh, data uh is is there a testing data set separately or or how how are you to, how are you going to evaluate the performance of the models that the the participant will submit or you are looking at only the result uh, of the result which the participant is submitting well uh, basically the 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 data set uh, for for training it's the the one i presented in uh, this before and then i will provide them the the data set without the throughput values in order to uh, to you know to to test the the train model okay and this is uh, for the the first problem statement and for the second one it's uh, it'll be a little uh, different because uh, we have to provide and the uh, data set uh, with only uh, one ap and a station per uh, per tx up okay only one ap and a station and then uh, well they they have to to find a, a way to you know to select the best uh, subset of uh, of devices uh, of this uh, associated to or around this uh, AP, okay. And, and, of, and you, yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. and of course with the the corresponding value of throughput that this uh, this uh, combination that they propose uh, can achieve. So you would be looking at the accuracy or some other metrics? Well, accuracy is the the metric we are we are looking for. Okay, and uh, do you do you have uh, some baseline uh, baseline that you have in mind? or uh, according to your studies there is a baseline uh, for the accuracy or do you do you are you looking for first time solutions i'm, I'm sure i'm sure uh, boris and you guys are studying this problem no so maybe maybe you have some some uh, baseline result uh, or something like that so what what is the, is there a baseline benchmark that you are going to compare against or uh, or this is new work well this is totally a new work no 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 baseline yet and so uh, we are open to to see the best solutions based on the the, the proper the proper solutions that uh, Thank you. Well, I, I mean, basically, we have uh, we have uh, algorithm. Uh, we already developed some algorithms, okay, and and then, of course, for for them, we have uh, some some results, and yeah, basically we we can include this uh, as a baseline okay yeah thank you uh, um, do you have some papers already or uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Or, uh, uh, maybe yeah yeah in the in the presentation uh, are you seeing my presentation right. yeah, yeah 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 well i put some yeah, this is okay. my. Well, it's, a, it's a paper that is not exactly uh, about machine learning, 
but it uh, includes all the information about multi -AP coordination and uh, all this kind of uh, uh, all this kind of uh, uh, values of throughput for the different combinations between APs and uh, stations. Okay. 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 Thank you very much. Yeah, that 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 was what I was looking for. Thank you. Uh, number of the stations. So in your data set, uh, what is the what is the number of stations that we are using? Also, uh, do they? You mentioned they move, but uh, the data set includes mobility, or not? Oh, okay, okay. Well, let's have a look in the in the an example of the data set. For instance, in the deployment number eight. The number of stations uh, is, uh, well, the number of rows that the RSSI matrix has, okay? So if uh, in this case, we only have nine uh, rows for the RSSI matrix, so uh, only one station is associated to each AP, okay? Uh, the number of uh, a station is a uh, multiple of uh, nine, okay? If we because we have uh, nine APs and all the APs uh, have uh, the same number of station associated. So if we, for instance, have the uh, twenty-seven rows here in the RSSI matrix, we will have three uh, station associated to each AP. Is it clear? Yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, and what else? Uh, do you did you did you ask something else or or about mobility? Mobility. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, got it. Well, mobility. Uh, yeah, the mobility is only uh, from one deployment to another. For for instance, uh, this uh, deployment devices are fixed okay once we simulated this uh, this uh, deployment we got the rssi matrix okay and then uh, devices are fixed only for this deployment we started uh, you know transmitting at every txr txr until uh, we reach the the TX up number 100. And then we uh, simulate the next deployment, of course, by uh, changing the position of the, the devices. But the, the, the position of the device's position is valid uh, for uh, each deployment. I see. OK, OK. Um... Let's uh, let's come back to the competition. So in the competition, in the previous competition, you had actually uh, papers, which uh, very nice papers, which uh, we wrote a thing together with Boris and uh, together with Frank, we had very nice uh, set of results and papers for this. For this competition also, are you looking at writing some papers based on this? Can the would you would you uh, would you collaborate with the participants to write the papers? What, what is your opinion? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, we are so excited to once the challenge <laughs> finish uh, finish. Uh, we of course uh, will collaborate with the. Finalists, um, okay, in order to write a paper and including these uh, these results because it's something that we we uh, we want. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And uh, um, the of course, ITU ITU will look at uh, certificates and prizes for this uh, for this as well. You can ask uh, for, for the participants. You can ask uh, any questions uh, regarding this in the neural network as well. We will, of course, have um, uh, 
uh, talks, uh, round table talks with David and colleagues. Uh, once there is registration, uh, we will we will come back with the David uh, to to have round tables where we explain questions with uh, the participants. So that's something which we will do later. Uh, is there a focus on throughput for all stations? Uh, George is asking, is there a focus on throughput for all stations? Uh, David, please. Well, uh, there are a focus. Well, our main uh, objective here is to evaluate the, or in the first problem statement is, uh, well, is intended for evaluating the, or estimating the throughput, okay? And basically, if we randomly select uh, two IPs to transmit simultaneously, we only consider the throughput, of course, achieved by these devices, okay? The, the throughput that uh, these uh, stations can achieve, but only for these two, okay? And, well, our metric is the aggregate throughput, basically the sum of these uh, throughput values of uh, the selected devices, and just that, okay? Uh, I don't know if uh, it answers the, this question of or not. Mm -hmm. uh uh yeah let's let's see let's see if george has more questions but um the uh the type of uh tool sets um uh, platforms that we would like to use the participants would like to use do you have any specific choice uh or it doesn't uh, doesn't matter uh for you it doesn't matter. Uh, it, the challenge is open for all kind of uh, models, and participants uh, are able to use the one that that uh, they feel more comfortable with. No, no special choices from my uh, side, and it's basically to to create a model that predicts the throughput using the inputs that we we provide and then is uh, the, the of course the the best is the one that uh, that uh, suit the most or predict the uh, the best uh, with the the best accuracy uh, you know as much accurate accurate as, as possible yeah uh yeah thank you thank you george is uh, asking what about every other station not in a simultaneous set uh okay well in the case of uh well uh, if i understand properly the it means the station Mm, those stations that uh, uh, weren't uh, include in this specific TSOP. Ah, well, basically, as well, uh, coordinated uh, mechanisms are implemented only well through the coordination, of course, uh, of all devices mm, uh, that participate in in this uh, well the set of devices uh, this is this uh, set of devices are uh, exchanging uh, information about the this uh, you know kind of thing and for instance if uh, two ap's and two stations are selected for this tx sub the the rest will uh, remain quiet okay for this txop and you know so far so on the in the next txop other devices will be selected and 
and thus, uh, in the end, of course, at devices are selected randomly, the probability of uh, selecting them is equal for all of them. And this is a kind of, uh, in, well, in a manner, this is something uh, fair, you know, to say fair because all the probability of selecting uh, each of them is the same for all devices. Thank you. And the, the, then the, the answer here is the, the STAs, uh, well, all the stations are in, uh, uh, are eligible for uh, being selected, okay? But of course, not uh, all of them will be selected in the same TXOP. So the ones that uh, uh, aren't selected in this TXOP, for instance, uh, uh, well, they they remain quiet as uh, in, for in, in the next TXOP uh, if they are selected uh, in the next or in a given TXOP. Okay. Um, so the the deployment topology and the the, the 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 position of the stations uh, we we are not looking at that the topology level information previously we had looked at it but now we are looking at only the rssi matrix um, why why are we doing that uh, why, um, because a, a some of the things which we studied earlier was uh, the distance between the uh, stations and the access points and the topology of the deployment, etc. But in this problem statement, you are only looking at the RSSI values. Could you explain this a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh... The the position, the geographic uh, location of every device is something you know relative because uh, for several positions the RSSI value could be the same even when devices are in different positions, and we consider uh, that the give that given the the RSSI matrix is uh, something more uh, accurate that given only the position because uh, the this matrix corresponds or this matrix includes the position of the devices by itself because uh, I mean we in my opinion <laughs> we don't we don't I prefer to have uh, the the RSSI value because it uh, includes both the position of, the, of every device and also the path of model because uh, the final value of uh, the received power at every device is uh, uh, the result of the device position and also the path loss uh, model used by uh, the simulation. So it's better in my opinion, to have the the RSSI matrix than the uh... ah okay got it uh, David you are there right. In here, I said. I think we lost David. I'm here. Can you see me? Ah, okay. Okay. I don't thank know. you. I, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I'm here. Uh, yeah, you, you you were you were uh, explaining that. Are you you were saying something or? No, no. I was saying that. Uh, uh, well, the the 
total SDA throughput is uh, well basically the result of uh, the the throughput of a single TSAP. So it uh, it's in, in my opinion similar to to the the, the thing we are uh, asking for. Okay, so in my opinion the the throughput is better. Uh, I mean. It's better to have the the throughput for a single TXOP uh, than the multiple TXOP. But this is a, for your issue, this is something uh, interesting uh, because uh, in the end, of course, uh, we will uh, or we can consider in for other uh, works we we can consider the total throughput. Uh, along multiple uh, ticks up yeah but in this case we only consider a uh, throughput for a single tx up okay does the does the time matter at all is there a time series involved at all or uh, or the time is not a factor here Sorry, uh, the time I I didn't get the, your yeah yeah the 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 your your measurements are time uh, relative or no no not not dependent on time. Oh well, no no, it's uh, they are uh, they don't depend on the the time. Okay, we don't have uh, any. Uh, uh, constraint well basically we simulated uh, all these uh, different deployments over time but not uh, using a specifically uh, specifically uh, timestamps and no no uh, nothing like like this okay so they are independent of on the time so so what is the what what is uh, the application of this prediction, David. So you you take the throughput prediction and uh, use it for uh, scheduling of users, or uh, the combinations uh, you would use for uh, use for scheduling of users. What, what would you do with the? What is the application of this uh, prediction? Well, uh, this is one of course the most important things that we we have uh, here uh, the idea is to find a, a model uh, that predicts uh, uh, the best combinations of ap's well this is something we we ask for in the second uh, problem statement and the idea is to to find the best uh, subsets of ap's to transmit simultaneously, okay, in order to uh, schedule them for uh, for you know for every TX up. If we are uh, are able to to find two or three IPs, uh, at it's just an example, okay, to to find two or three IPs or four IPs. Uh, to find these groups of compatible APs, to, to say something, uh, the the scheduler or, or the APs uh, can exchange this information, and in the future they are uh, will be able to transmit uh, or to use these specific groups uh, to transmit simultaneously at every TXO. Okay. Well, the idea uh, here is. To create something uh, uh, that includes only throughput, throughput in saturation conditions, but of course this can be extended in the future uh, for two two other metrics like uh, latency or something like this, because uh, these two metrics are once the most important today, throughput and latency, and but. Uh, basically, the idea is that you know uh, to find the the groups of uh, compatible IPs that that uh, can be able to uh, to transmit simultaneously in a coordination 
environment, okay? Without okay. the without the need of uh, as you know the traditional uh, uh, Wi-Fi devices uh, has has to to wait for the random the CSMA mechanism and now uh, if we have uh, this group of compatible APs we can schedule them based on orders of course uh, depending on the traffic or other things that traffic in their buffers but we uh, we can use these uh, compatible APs to uh, improve the performance of these devices by using the, the spatial reuse mechanism or scheme in a coordination a coordinated environment. Very good. Thank you so much. Yes, that makes sense. And it also that that is also important to make the inference latency also a, a factor because you would like to you would like to infer it fast predict it fast and then use it for coordination between the between the groups i think that's that's an interesting problem as well um thank you very much i think we don't have any more questions we can probably have some uh, i have some comments from boris uh, boris are you here uh, could you would you like to make some comments? Uh, yes, please. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm here. Do you hear me? This, you know, first of all, a pleasure to meet you because I think. Uh, sorry, I can start my video. Yes. So, no. Sorry. Yeah, it's a pleasure to meet you in person because we have been in touch in the past, but I think it's the first time. So anyway. Uh, big pleasure. Uh, no, I, I don't have anything else to add about uh, what David has, has mentioned and has explained it. So I just think that it's a very nice challenge and it's a really research related because, I mean, being able to build a model, able to predict this, this throughput given a set of access point and station can be a very good contribution to the, the community and to the research community and may enable the, the use uh, of, I mean, the use of this model to, to enhance or to, to develop new schedulers and um, improve significantly the, the Wi-Fi performance in this, in this case. So yeah, I think it's a very nice challenge and we can, I mean, I'm sure uh, we and, and especially all the participants will do a very nice job with, with, with that. Thank you. Thank you very much for it. Yes, it is a pleasure as well. Uh, actually, our last paper uh, is also a very global paper. Participants from across the world, uh, we collaborated to write the paper. Thank you very much for that collaboration. This is a great opportunity for participants as well to, to, to learn from you and uh, the colleagues in the lab. <laughs> yeah. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, back to you, Thomas. Uh, thanks a lot, Vishnu, uh, for moderating the Q&A. What a, an interesting chat uh, it was. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, David for making time to present uh, the problem statements from UPF. And we hope that participants will choose uh, this problem statement to work on for the 2022 ITA and machine and energy challenge. I have a few announcements to make. Um, I would like to inform you that the challenge, uh, this particular problem statement is open. You can find it on the problem statement portal. Uh, if, you, if you check, uh, I will share also uh, the details of the portal in the chat uh, on the video wall for the colleagues co uh, connected on the neural network. At the same time, we would like also to announce that we have the ITU Compute. Uh, this is the ITU Challenge Compute Platform. This will be given to participants. Uh, of course, participants can contact us at challenge at itu.int. Uh, we welcome uh, participants who have started working on the challenge and they would like to access the, this uh, compute platform. Uh, we have uh, GPUs that are free to, free to use only for the purposes of the challenge. So if you have problems to access good compute platform, 
and you would like to utilize the IT resources, please get in touch with us and we'll give you access to the compute platform, but make sure that you use it only for the challenge. At this point in time, I would like to close and I would like to also to inform you that there are many sessions that are organized by the AI for Good. You can go to the AI for Good page and check on the program. For the challenge, the next episode, uh, the problem statement is coming from NIST and the challenge, uh, sorry, the webinar is tomorrow. So please make a date with us and be connect with us for the, yet another webinar from the ITU AI and Machine Learning 5G challenge. From me and my colleagues at the ITU AI and Machine Learning 5G challenge, I'd like to wish you a very good day. Bye bye. Thank you for participating in today's AI for Good session. We hope you've learned something new, innovative, and engaging in today's event. We now encourage you to continue the conversation on the live video wall in the neural network. Here you can ask questions, like and comment, share links, complete the satisfaction survey, connect with interesting profiles, or speak one-on-one -on -one using the chat and video function. After the 30-minute networking session, we invite you to explore the lobby, try the smart matching quiz, visit the virtual exhibits and poster boards, and build your personalized AI for good program. It was a pleasure learning with you today. See you at the next AI for Good.